Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm Dave Robinson. I'm the applications team leader here at McKino for the EDM side. So uh, today I'm going to do a presentation on EDM electro material and design. So uh, just to give you some background on me, I've been here now for 17 years. I've worked for other OEMs in the, in the industry and I also worked in the shop. So I have about 35 years EDM experience. So uh, I've seen it from conventional days all the way up to what we have now. So a lot of big changes on the, on the graphite design side of things. So uh, the machines themselves, the electro designs have changed so much. I think some of the old stuff really doesn't apply anymore. And I think the machines really suffer because of that, that we don't use the machines efficiently. So we wanted to give you a little presentation today to, to teach you some of the new techniques and make sure that you guys are designing electrodes and building electrodes to make your machines run most efficient. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about uh, in the electro material selection side is graphite. So in the U.S., graphite is probably the most prevalent material for electrodes. Uh, probably 90% of, of the EDM machines run off graphite. So uh, what are the, the advantages of graphite? So probably most of you guys know, the biggest thing is, is the removal rate. So the highest removal rate is going to come from graphite. So that's going to make the machine run most efficiently. Not that copper and copper tungsten and some of the other alternative materials aren't a good source for the machine as far as electrodes, but graphite really is, is the highest removal rate and it's going to make the machine burn most efficiently. Uh, second then is a, the lower cost of electrode, electrode manufacturing. Uh, it, it's easier on the tools for the machine, less tooling in the, the graphite cutting machine. So if you're cutting in a, a dedicated graphite mill, that's really where you're going to get your best tooling cost and also fastest machining speeds as well in graphite. So that kind of then goes into the third point, basically that faster electrode machining that we can get them through the graphite mill faster and get to the, the sinker faster. Uh, so what, what type of parts are we gonna use graphite for? And of course, well, why would we use them? So most commonly tool steels. So any of you guys that build molds, you're, you know you're gonna H13, P20, very, very common types of material. So uh, second, aluminum. So EDM and aluminum, very quick, but there are some limitations to aluminum. Uh, especially on the aerospace side, so I'll talk about that in a couple slides ahead. Uh, Inconel, so for aerospace parts, Inconel, uh, great materials as far as graphite goes to machine Inconel. And then titanium, uh, really no other uh, alternatives than graphite to machine titanium, at least effectively. Uh, copper, you can do it, but not very effective. Uh, very poor cycle times and very poor wear, at least from the Makino side. And then again, we're using the graphite because it is a lower cost. So you're saving time with it and also lower cost. So uh, what are the different grades of graphite you should use and why and what applications? So uh, you guys probably just sat through a, uh, a graphite presentation, some of you. So it went to a much higher level than I'm going to go for sure. So uh, just some of the grades of graphite here that we sell through SST, uh, SG15, SG30, and SG50. So mainly SG30 and SG50, very, very good grades of graphite, perform very well in the EDM machine. So they compare to the, the POCO EDM 200 and POCO 3. Uh, one of the biggest reasons we use the Mersenne graphite is the cost. It's much lower cost, about 40% less. So it, your, your consumables guys will, can quote that for you as well. So I definitely look, if you're using POCO EDM 200 and POCO 3, take a look at the, the SG grades of graphite and see what the equivalents are and, and how much money you could save. They perform almost exactly the same. So again, some of the, the advantages uh, on the graphite side. So much higher removal rates versus copper. So uh, we have an example here on the board. So a pretty standard example, uh, a one inch square, a one inch by one inch square going 400 thou deep. So this is some of the data that comes out of the, the Makino control, the new Makino, the Hyper Eye control. So you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, on that one inch square with a, a 12 and a half thou reduction, we can remove 0.68 grams of material per minute. 
if if we do the same thing using copper, same same settings as far as the the size of the electrode, same reduction, we're only going to remove 0.15 grams per minute. So you can see that's a huge difference, four and a half times faster roughing speed just by using graphite over copper. So I don't know if I have any Canadian guys in here. So uh, in Canada, the the copper side is very prevalent. So hopefully you guys will start looking at some of this graphite stuff to uh, to increase your removal rates. It's cheaper cost and definitely much more efficient than the copper side. Uh, then again, uh, lower electro manufacturing costs. So uh, just a general representation of that same electro we talked about, the one by one by four in SG50, about $18 on average to, uh, to make that electrode, where using oxygen-free copper side you're $105, so pretty expensive as far as electro material goes. So, and then again, on the electro machining side, you're gonna machine that graphite much faster than that metallic electrode, and you're not gonna go through as much tooling. So that's just more added cost on the copper versus graphite. So again, where are we gonna use that graphite? So tool steels, where we need a finish of less than two R max. So if, if we need something better than that two R max finish, then copper is gonna definitely be your, your alternative to get that better surface finish. And then we had talked about aluminum a couple slides ago. So aluminum, a little bit bigger restriction with graphite. So 11 R max finish, best we can do in graphite, where we can go down to about a six R max if we switch to copper as, as an electrode material. So again, aerospace, uh, graphite is pretty much the standard as far as aerospace goes. Uh, also, some of the, the copper impregnated graphite materials as well work very well for the, inter, the aerospace industry materials. And then last, again, just to reiterate, if you're doing titanium, graphite really is your, your only electrode. So talking again about the uh, different grades of graphite. So the SG15 uh, Mersan graphite, uh, 13 micron grain structure. So we can get uh, really good roughing speed. And then pretty decent surface finish at either between a nine to 18 micro inch millimeter RA surface finish. Uh, the SG30, probably one of the most common grades that, that we run here, especially when we do testing and test cuts. Uh, the SG30 is a seven micron grade size and we can get down to a four micromillimeter RA finish. Uh, SG50, so really high end, good grade of graphite, uh, at less than five microns grain size. Still has really good roughing speed, but we're going to get that better surface finish so we can get down to the best surface finish, down to that uh, two R max finish that, that our machine will achieve. Uh, just to hit some of the POCO grades to match. Uh, so the EDM 200, uh, 10 micron grain size, good surface finish and good roughing speed. So good, good grade for consumer molds and automotive molds. And then the POCO 3, your uh, ultra-fine grade, grade of graphite, less than five microns, so very similar to the SG50, uh, but good for intricate molds and really fine finish details. Uh, so now looking at copper as an electrode material. So the best surface finish you're gonna ever get is with copper. So if, if surface finish is really your number one goal, then we're gonna use copper. Uh, and also best shape accuracy. So. One of the reasons we get best shape accuracy with copper is the low wear on the finish side of it. Graphite is very high in its wear uh, as far as the finish side goes. So as we get to a better finish, one of the things that suffer is the electrode wear. So some of the settings are as high as 100% wear when it gets down to fine finish, where on the, the copper side is much lower. It's only about 5%. So and it's only 5% of, of a couple of microns. So it's very low as far as wear goes. So that's where that best shape accuracy comes into play. Again then, so best shape accuracy kind of translates also using that for high accuracy parts. And then again, your parts that, that need that, that finish that we can't get by graphite. Talking about some of the coppers themselves, uh, oxygen-free copper, so the most preferable grade of, of copper, 99.9% .9 pure copper. So it's what we refer to as a 110 grade of graphite. So best finish you're gonna get, 
Problem with that is that if any of you guys have machined pure copper, you know that it rolls up pretty good burr, it's pretty gummy, so a little bit difficult to machine. But on the other side of it, on the, the EDM side, very easy to get that good finish and the best shape accuracy. A uh, good alternative is the Copper 101, which is 99.1% pure copper. Uh, it's an electrolytic copper. So you're gonna get great surface finish with it as well, but a little bit more machinable. And then the third grade, uh, tellurium copper. I just actually talked to one of the guys here today about 145. So the, it, what we refer to as telco, the tellurium that they put in the copper uh, makes it more machinable, but it does get in the way of the EDM process. So it, it's, it's not gonna give us as good a finish or as bad, a good a shape accuracy that we would get with the pure copper. So a decent alternative. Uh, I, I guess it's getting a little more scarce to get the telco. So that's something that, that you have to look at as well. So uh, copper, again, is a material for aluminum side. So generally in aerospace, they're looking for pretty high-end finishes when they're gonna use copper. So we can get down to a four hour max or a 0.2 uh, hour max in copper as well. Uh, best shape accuracy again in the copper side. So if you're looking for the best looking part, best accuracy part, best surface finish, definitely copper is gonna be your electro material. Uh, now to talk about copper tungsten. So what are the advantages of copper tungsten? Uh, mainly uh, doing uh, tungsten carbide parts. So in tungsten carbide parts, uh, about 15 to 20% electrode wear. So it seems high, but the machine runs in negative polarity to, uh, to deal with the tungsten carbide workpiece. So it is actually uh, is about as good as you can get as far as wear goes. Uh, versus copper impregnated graphite, where we're at 45 to 50%. So you can imagine how many electrodes to hold a, a two-tenth tolerance on a workpiece. You're into seven or eight electrodes sometimes where copper tungsten, maybe three to four electrodes with that 15 to 20% wear. So probably the best material you're ever going to use for, for the tungsten carbide side. Uh, second advantage of copper tungsten so uh, anything that's very difficult to machine, so very fine detail work pieces or very deep thin electrodes. So if it's really hard to, to machine in graphite or copper where you're damaging that electrode when you machine it, we can go to copper tungsten and use the tungsten side of it to make that more machinable and, and add some stability to the electrode at the same time. So cost wise, you're, it's gonna be the best and then also performance. It, the, so here's a little example. So an electrode cavity uh, in copper tungsten. So $399 material cost, and it's also reusable. So we can use it for subsequent electrodes and machine it several times, where if we use copper impregnated graphite, once it goes into the oil and it's machined, most guys don't like to put it back into their graphite machine. They don't want that slurry mess in their graphite. So that's where that, that copper tungsten really shines that we can reuse it. So the copper impregnated graphite for that same $399 cost in copper tungsten, it's about $134, but that $134 is used up. So we, we don't get to reuse it and we're gonna use more electrodes. So Generally, the, the machining time is double for copper electro graphites uh, because of the amount of electrodes that you're going to have to run. So sometimes up to around seven versus three. So and the, the accuracy and net shape that we produce on the copper tungsten side into tungsten copper tungsten carbide much better than we would with the copper tungsten. So some of the alternative materials uh, that we use on the the machining side, uh, steel to steel. I don't know if any of you guys have ever done steel to steel, it's a very, very slow, painful to watch process. Uh, it's a really old technique, probably done for the last 30 to 50 years where we do mold match, where we take the, the upper and lower sections of a mold, burn them together to burn the parting line. So it comes out perfect, but it takes a lot of time. So all of our machines have steel to steel settings in them. Uh, Copper graphite, like we had talked about previously, 
So a good alternative to copper tungsten if, if cost is an issue or, or you're gonna run through a lot of electrodes. Uh, and it's also a, a really good material to burn uh, Moldstar and Moldmax. So if you guys have burned Moldstar or Moldmax, you know that it's very tough uh, material to, to machine and uh, very high wear. And then silver tungsten, uh, the last one I wanna talk about. Uh, it's really the best material for electro dressing. Um, copper tungsten would be the, the second good alternative. The, the biggest problem with silver tungsten is it's pretty cost prohibitive. Obviously silver is pretty expensive material, but it is the most conductive material we're gonna have on the electrode side. And, and then added with the tungsten has very good wear characteristics. So if you're gonna do any type of electro dressing, it really works the best. Uh, now we're gonna pop into the reduction side of it. So this is probably the most important side. Uh, the, the material side, pretty simple as far as selecting a material, but biggest thing that the machine really needs is an effective reduction selected in that electro design as well. So uh, why is the electro reduction really important? So the first thing is that it maximizes our, our material removal rates, as you saw that, that first example. So at 680 grams per minute, it's pretty fast, pretty high removal rate. So and we'll look at some data in a minute here that, that really support that. So we also can achieve a lower cost for the process, uh, achieve our best electro wear rate. I'm gonna jump in here and show you a, a quick example. So why is that electro reduction really important? So uh, the first thing is to maximize the removal rates. So you can see here on the right hand side, there's a chart of our data book. So with that data book, each one of these processes relates then back to its e-code number and removal rate. So with this, our, our removal rate, if, if we're running at 12 and a half uh, per side reduction is 680 grams per minute. If we change that e-code then and maybe drop down one process and, and only have eighth hour of reduction, we drop from 680 to 640. Well, a lot of guys run five thou on everything. That's kind of the old adage. They love to run five thou reduction. That was just what they did. They didn't even really know why. So if I had to run that at five thou reduction, I would only run uh, process 4052. So we've went from a 680 gram removal rate down to 350. So I've just increased my machining time to double and my wear rate, the difference between this from 0.1 all the way to 1.5%. So I've wore my electrode 15 times as much and gave up basically half of the machining time back to the machine because I didn't use an effective electrode reduction on the electrode. Here's another good example, kind of reiterating the same thing. So that 680 gram removal rate using E-code 4055 in process five. So for that setting, that, that size of electrode, that one inch electrode with 12 thou reduction, that's gonna be the best removal and best wear condition. On the flip side of it, so if we drop down from 12 just to 10, so two thou then drops us from 680 to 640, our wear increases then from 0.1% to 0.3%. And then the lastly, going with the, the old five thou reduction, we again drop down to 0.350 we increased to 1.5% electrode wear. So 50% longer cycle time and 15% more wear, plus jumping from probably two electrodes to three or four electrodes now. So we've had to make more electrodes. It's taken us twice as long or three times as long to do. And then the machine's not gonna perform to the level it needs to. So how do we determine that electrode undersize on an electrode? So the first, first limiting factor is the inside corner radius. So we can't take a 10 thou electrode and make a 5 thou radius. That's physically impossible. So whatever that inside corner radius is, that's going to set what your finishers are set to. So if, if cycle time's a concern and you're stuck with that, that finisher being a small uh, electrode undersize, we can then design roughers and finishers of larger reduction and use those larger removal rates to make that machine more efficient. So 
Guys like to uh, reuse electrodes or the graphite guy doesn't like to make multiple electrodes of different sizes. Really all you're doing is handcuffing that, that machine because we don't feed it electrodes that are designed correctly to take advantage of the machine. So using the, the rougher semi-finisher finisher with different size undersides really makes that machine more efficient and still gets us to that final finish and final inside corner radius requirement. Uh, so what the second thing we look at once we've determined, hey, what's our, our small inside corner radius if, if needed, then we look at what is the frontal contact area of that electrode. So in this case, a one inch square in our Makino data books, we're gonna be between 600 and 1.2, so about dead in the middle of that. So this is the data chart that you're gonna look for in the book. So all EDM machines have uh, data inside of them that determine what that, that frontal contact area is and what setting needs to be run. So this just happens to be how our machines are set up here. First thing we need to do is, once we've designed that electro, we need to figure out then what the start process is for that reduction. So a good rule of thumb, uh, 50 amps average per inch of contact area is really the maximum area allowed. And it's pushing it really to the max, but technically a good grade of graphite can handle 50 amps per square inch. So we also select that process based on minimum spark area and reduction to match. So we can also reduce the electrode too much that we can't take advantage of that reduction. So let's say we reduce the electrode uh, 20 thou per side. Well, this, the data here may only, in this case, only support up to 8 thou. So just because we can make that electrode bigger in reduction, the machine won't support it as far as the overburn or we can't put enough power to it to take advantage of that reduction. So we can also go too far as well where we reduce it too much. So looking at the data in these data books and using those data books to your advantage to get those removal rates and the correct reductions to start with for our start process is really the key. Should roughing electrodes and finishing electrodes be the, the same undersize? Yes, if you're gonna use reuse strategy. So here's a, a example of that reuse strategy. We set up five different cavities in the machine. So the orange color represents in our control the, the roughing electrode, light green, the semi finisher, and blue, the final finisher. So in this case, we've roughed our first cavity with, with electrode number one, it basically is used up. And then we go into electrode number two, uh, we semi finish, the sec that first cavity with the second electrode, and then we go in to the, our second cavity and rough with it again. And then third electrode comes in, we finish, semi-finish, and rough. So we've used it on three different locations to take advantage of that electrode. And then again, same thing, we, we push that electrode out, we do a finish, and then we run a semi, and the last thing we do is finish. So using reuse, by using electrodes of the same reduction, we could reuse those electrodes on multiple cavities and, and take advantage of that. So the only, the only way we really can't do that is if we have to use rough or semi and finisher of different sizes to take advantage of the removal rates where we have that small inside corner radius. Uh, moving on to then, so once we've determined our reduction, uh, we need to determine whether we're gonna use a 2D reduction or a 3D reduction. So just to uh, show you guys an example, so two redu 2D reduction, we only remove stock on the side. So we only remove it on the X and Y side of it. So we don't reduce the bottom. Uh, 3D reduction, all directions. Basically we take that whole electrode, we reduce it by whatever the reduction on all sides. So what's the difference between 2 and 3D reduction? First thing is you can't cut an electrode 2D and orbit 3D with it and actually get uh, radiuses and angles to come out correctly. So uh, if you cut 2D, you orbit 2D. If you reduce 3D, you orbit 3D. So uh, we get guys in the shop, you'll see they've reduced the electrodes 3D. Uh, the part has radius and angles in it. They're, technically not correct 
when we run a 2D reduction on a 3D reduced electrode because of, of the orbit patterns themselves. So uh, a reason we're going to use that 2D reduction is if it, it's a flat bottom shape, so very simplistic shape, and highest accuracy is not our goal. So generally 2D round orbit gives us the lowest cycle time where that electrode's only reduced on, on the sides. Uh, 3D reduction preferred if electrode shape is complex or really high accuracy is needed. Those radiuses need to be correct. Angles need to be correct. Uh, problem with 3D reduction for cycle time, 3D re uh, reduction is much longer than 2D reduction. So that's the biggest difference. So if you're looking for speed, you're going to want to try to, to reduce your electrodes 2D. Generally in the molding side though, 3D spherical is probably the most common. So we have to orbit 3D. So why do I need to match that orbit pattern to the, the, the electrode reduction? Again, if we undersize 2D, we orbit 2D. So you can see over here some of the, the 2D orbit patterns that are in our control. So the most commonly used 2D round and 2D square. And then on the 3D side, so over here, more complex orbit shapes. These are going to put those radiuses where they belong, put angles correct. So that these are the most commonly in our our control in the project programming system. Thank you. All right. So that was our presentation on uh, sinker EDM electrode material selection and reduction. Um, so Dave and I are available for any questions that you might have at this time. Uh, if you look on your screen there, uh, there is a chat window and a, is also a, a Q&A section. You can put your questions in, in either location and um, we're available to answer any questions that you have. All right. Well, good afternoon to you as well, Scott. Um, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and type them in, and uh, we can we can answer anything that you might uh, have. So here's a question came in. Do we recommend using a hybrid of electrode materials to take advantage of material removal? Uh, graphite for roughing and copper for finishing. So, Dave, you want to answer that? Yep. Uh, excellent question. And yeah, the, definitely the best way to go. That way we, uh, for the roughing side, we use graphite. So we're going to get our best removal rates and best wear on the graphite side to rough. But then on the finishing side, we're going to get best finish with copper. And of course, best uh, net shape as far as the, the part goes. So yeah, taking advantage of using both electro materials, definitely the best way to go. All right, very good. Okay. Well, you're welcome, Leo. That's why we're here is to help you out and uh, give you a better understanding of machining practices. And um, th that is a common question, I think, that, that we receive is the difference between copper and graphite electrodes. Um, there are applications for both of them. Okay, Scott has a question. Uh, so he uses copper and he's saying, is it true um, that on the copper you need a little uh, bit larger uh, reduction? Is that true? No, actually, uh, generally graphite has just slightly larger reductions, especially when you get to uh, larger electrodes. So pretty much the, the larger you go on the electrode, the more overburn or reduction that you need on the electrode. So generally, uh, graphite is slightly higher. Um, copper kind of limits out uh, generally copper, not much more than 10 to 12 thou per side of reduction on your standard copper electrodes. Uh, on the small side, though, uh, generally copper is a little bit larger reduction if it's very, very small electrodes where then graphite uh, 
it is a little bit less. So okay, so so it depends on the the actual yeah. size of the electrode itself. Yeah, it's really application dependent. So and then again, it doesn't matter if you're using copper or graphite. Looking at what that machine it needs to give you those those good removal rates and looking at the data inside of the machine to maximize that that electrode reduction to give you that best uh, material removal rate. Okay, very good. Uh, another question. Uh, good. What are good practices for burning deep or thin ribs? Deep so, and thin ribs. Yeah, pro probably one of the more difficult applications is definitely deep thin ribs. The problem with it is as that electrode, you know, pushes down to try to finish the bottom and sidewall at the same time, uh, the, the physics of it, the, the dielectric fluid gets in the way, it pushes back against that thin electrode. So uh, really uh, looking at good electrode undersize, getting up the proper electrode undersize where it's not too much or too little. On the programming side, it is probably the bigger thing that uh, with the Makino machines, using the right machining method, uh, either what we, 43 or 53, and what that does is when it orbits, it backs the machine up further and it comes at, at less steep of an angle. So it limits that fluid influence on the electrode, that push away where we kind of get that electrode almost like in a C shape. I mean, exaggerated, of course, where we get hot spots on the bottom of these, these deep thin ribs. You'll see good surface finish at the bottom, good surface finish at the top, but about a third of the way up, you get a, a hot band where it didn't didn't clean up and looks really rough. And that's really that the influence from that fluid or uh, too aggressive of, of an electrode orbit. Okay. And so on that with the deep thin rib, is it is there an advantage to using a different electrode material? Like would, would copper tungsten be an advantage sometimes yeah. or no? Yep. Uh, copper tungsten, especially when we start to get real thin under 20 thou at the tip, you know, some of the stuff. We've seen guys go down to even 10 thou at the tip. So even the graphite production is a little easier. Uh, you can wire a, a copper tungsten electrode to do those deep thin ribs. Okay, very good. Uh, Brendan has a question. Uh, is it recommended to rough mill molds to remove material before using the electrodes? Uh, yep, so definitely pre-mill is good. So yeah, generally go pre-mill and then send out to heat treat, come back and and do all your finish work with either graphite or copper electrodes. One key point though, you can actually pre-mill too much. So where you go in and with the electrode and actually have to take out that thin band of material and, and we have to do it from the top down. What we wanna do is pre-mill enough where that electrode reduction, it can drop in and orbit out. If we have to take that from the top down all the way, then we can't put as much power to it then we end up with a bunch of wear, really slow removal rate. So too much pre-mill can actually be a disadvantage. So looking at how much you pre-mill and how much you can reduce that electrode and matching those two up uh, to take advantage of that pre-mill is a good idea. But again, don't overdo it where you have to take it out from the top. All right, very good. Okay. I don't think I see any more questions. So I want to thank everyone for taking time today uh, to talk to us about uh, Sinker EDM electrodes. Uh, if you have any more questions, um, you can contact myself or Dave Robinson, and we can answer any questions that you might have. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day.